What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to use MongoDB as the database for our GraphQL server in Golang. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. On a previous video, we created a GraphQL schema that included a video, the author of the video, that is a user, a query to get a list of videos, and a mutation to create new videos. And we generated the code using GQL gen we created this resolver that uses a slice, this one here, and uses this slice to store the data. Let's go back. Okay, so now we are going to replace this slice that we're using here and here with a MongoDB database. So we're going to create a repository that is going to interact with a MongoDB database, and we're going to store our documents for the videos using that database. Okay, let's create a repository. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it mongo repo.go. The package is going to be repository. And let's create an interface first. Type video repository interface repository let's go back a little bit here we are storing videos so we need a save function in our repo and we are getting the list of existing videos so we need a find all to get the list of existing videos so it's going to be save video and here we need to use model that video video and then we needed to implement a find all function to get the list of existing videos and it's going to return a slice of videos model that video Okay, now I'm going to create a function to initialize the repo, basically to connect our application with the MongoDB database. We can call it new. And here I'm going to add a struct to implement that interface. This is gonna be database, struct. And here what we need is a client for Mongo. This is Mongo dot client okay this is going to return a video repository so it's going to return a reference to the database struct and this is database and this is going to include the client here I'm going to assign nil for now, and then we're going to replace it with the actual client. Um, and here we need to implement these functions. This is gonna be db database. And then we also have the find all function here. This is going to be pretty similar. Okay, this is the basic skeleton of the repo. Now let's add the code required to connect with the database. So first we need a URL. I'm going to use a cloud-based service for Mongo, that is MongoDB Atlas. And here I'm going to read an environment variable with the URL. So I need to use this os.getm and I'm going to call it mongodb. And here I'm going to pass the URL. And let me show you the database here. This is the URL with the port. It's the default port, 27017. And I need to pass the username and the password. So the format is like this. It's mongodb plus serve. 
username, password, at host, and port. That's the format. So we're going to read that from this environment variable. And here we're going to create the different parameters to connect with the database using the client. So we define a variable, we call it client options, where first we need to apply the URL. So this is gonna be options, and here we say client, and here we apply the URL or the URI, that is MongoDB. And we can also set as part of the client options, the connection pool. So we're going to set 50 connections as the size of our connection pool. So this is gonna be client options, set max pool size, and let's say 50. So we need to connect with the Mongo database. We need to use Mongo that connect and we also need to pass the context and using this context we can specify a connection timeout so we can use context that with timeout here and we need to pass context that background and the time for the timeout we're gonna say 30 seconds time that second and we need to assign this to a context variable and we're going to ignore any errors like this okay and now we need to use here we need to use that context where we specify the timeout and we need to pass the client options so here we have the url here we have the connection pool and here we specify the connection timeout and we assign 30 seconds to it. And here we connect with the database and I need to assign here the client, let's say DB client, and it's going to return an error in case we get any errors connecting with the Mongo database. And I'm going to handle the error here. I'm going to log the error. Here I'm going to print Just to check that we are connected to the database. And the last thing is assigning this DB client here. Okay, with this, we have our connection to Mongo. Now we need to work on the save function and the final function. Now let's work on the save function. So in MongoDB, we have a database. We're going to use this GraphQL database here. And within the database, we have collections. In this case, we're going to use these videos collections. And within this collection, we're going to store the video documents. So first, we need to access that collection. And we need to use db.client. This is the MongoDB client that we are creating here. And here we need to, first we need to access the database. In our case, it's gonna be GraphQL. And then within the database, we access the collection that in our case, the name for that collection is videos, like this. I'm going to create a couple of constants so we can reuse them from all the functions. So here I'm going to create const and I'm going to call them database. And collection. Like this. The database, I'm going to copy this from here. The database is going to be GraphQL and the collection is going to be videos. So here I'm going to replace this value with database with the constant and the same for the collection 
using this constant here. Okay, and to insert a new document, we need to use this collection and we're going to use the insert one function. Here we're going to pass an empty context. So we're going to use context that to do. This to do function returns a non nil and empty context. So we can use that here. And I'm going to pass the video. This is the element that is going to be stored as a document within the MongoDB database. And this is going to return either a context or an error. So I'm not going to use the context here. And I'm going to handle the error in case we get any errors when inserting this video document. And I'm going to handle the error here. And this is going to be pretty similar to this. So I'm going to copy this here. Okay, that's it for the save function. Now let's work on the find all function. We need to access the collection again. And we need to use the find function from the collection. And we need to pass again, we need to pass an empty context. So we are going to use this context that to do that returns an empty context. And in this case, the filter is going to be empty because we are going to return all the elements. And this is the way that we specify this filter to get all the existing videos. And this is going to return a cursor. And we need to handle the error in case we get any errors executing the function. Okay, I'm going to handle the error. I'm going to close the cursor once the function finishes. So I need to use defer for that cursor that close. And I need to pass the context, context that to do again. And here I'm going to create a variable to store the results that we get from the database. And now I'm going to iterate over the documents that I got from MongoDB here. And I'm going to decode those documents, those elements, and store them within a slice of videos. And this function is going to return that slice as the result. So here I'm going to set result. This is going to be a slice of videos. So this is going to be model that video. And here I'm going to add a loop cursor that next. So this next function is going to return the next document for the cursor. So I'm going to grab the context from here. First, I need to declare a video so I can store each document using this variable. So this is going to be model.video. Here I need to decode each element. So I need to use cursor that decode and I need to use the video variable to store the element. And here I need to handle any errors decoding the document and I'm going to use this here to handle the error. And finally I need to append each element to this slice. So this is going to be append and I need to pass the slice and the element that is going to be the video. And here I need to return the slice of videos that is this result variable. Okay, that's pretty much it for the repo. Now let's go back to the resolver and let's replace the slice that we're using here and here. So I'm going to create a variable bar video repo and this is going to be repository that video repository and this is the type of the variable and here i need to use repository that new so now i can use this repo here this is going to be video repo that save 
and I can pass the video here. I need to make a few changes to the video. Um, if we go to the model, here we have the identifier, but I want to be able to assign the identifier for this document. So I need to specify the identifier for Mongo like this underscore ID. In this case, we're going to assign a value as the identifier for the video document. But if we want to use the MongoDB default object ID, we can use something like this, bison and dash. And using this is going to use the default generated value to be assigned to the identifier of the document. I'm going to undo this and I'm going to keep this. So we are going to assign a value as the identifier of the video. Let's go back to a resolver. Here I'm going to convert this int to a string. So I'm going to use this library and I need to use this function. Okay, and here I need to use the video repository to return the list of existing videos. So I need to use video repo. So I need to call the final function of the repo. And that's pretty much all we need. So I'm going to start the server, go run server.go. And now let's try this. Let's access the playground. And first I'm going to create a video. I'm going to use the mutation that we created. I'm going to assign video one as the title, this URL and this user ID. I'm going to run this. And as we can see here, the document was created. So if we go to the database, I'm going to refresh this. And we're going to see that we have that document in the database with this identifier the title, the URL, and these values for the author. Let's go back. And here I'm going to create another video, video two, user two, I'm going to change the URL. And now if we run the find videos query, we're gonna get those two elements, video one and video two. That's pretty much all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel and I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.